Hi everyone, welcome to a follow-up video on the last one we did, looking at obtuse angles and some of these new trigonometric identities that arise. Now, we're going to just in this video look at a couple of examples where we need to fill in a few blanks for the suitable supplementary angle value or the obtuse angle value here. Now, in the last video, we defined a couple of relationships, a couple of these um, trigonometric identities, we called them. So one of those was that cos of theta equals two, sorry, cos of 180 minus theta that equals to negative cos of theta. We also looked at sine of 180 minus theta equaled just regularly to sine theta. And finally, the tan of 180 minus theta equaled to negative tan theta. Okay, so we want to use these ones we defined in the previous video for filling in these blanks here. So we want to find an angle value, some obtuse angle value that's going to give us the same thing as doing sine 30. Now, if we look at our table, well, not our table, our little bits of information we wrote down here, we're going to be using this middle one here. So the sine of an angle, this being 30 here, is the same as the sine of 180 minus that same angle. So here it was 30. So that's going to be the same as 180 minus 30. So we can say that sine of 30 is equal to sine of 150 degrees. You can write this in your calculator as well. Have a look and you will see that we get to the exact same thing. Now let's actually just quickly confirm this based on what we talked about before with this idea of the unit circle. So here I have sine of 30. So I'll do a 30 degree angle here. Okay, and sine of 30 was just some y over one as we're looking at the opposite over the hypotenuse. So if I take a 30 degrees here, if I take 150 degrees, I'm gonna draw this in with blue. This angle here of 150, that gives us a triangle in the second quadrant, whose angle value is the same as theta. So it's the same as 30. So we're gonna get essentially something which is identical. We have the same triangle as this one, but just in the second quadrant. Now in the second quadrant, we said that the sign was positive. So that means that the reason that is, is because we still have a positive Y value. So the ratio is still gonna be some positive Y over the hypotenuse of one. So this checks out. This is why I have a positive here and a positive here. And you can just double check this. Don't know what happened there. You can double check this by popping sine of 30 and sine of 150 into your calculators and you should get the exact same thing. Now let's look at this one here. We have negative cos of 57 equals to cos of something here. Now, these negatives arise up here. So we know that a negative cos of some theta angle is going to be the same as a positive cos of 180 minus that same angle. So we're going to be using this guy up here in order to solve this. So a negative cos of theta equals to a positive 
cos of 180 minus that same angle. Now in this case, the angle, oops, that was meant to be there. The angle in question is going to be 57 degrees. So what we're going to get here is going to be cos of 123 degrees. So if you were to put in cos of 123 into your calculators, put in cos of 57 and put a negative in front of it, you will get the exact same answer in your calculator. It won't be a pretty one, but it will be the same. Now, one more question to work through here. If I have tan of 81 degrees, that's going to equal to minus tan of something in here. So we're using our third identity that we defined in the previous video is that tan of 180 minus theta equals to negative tan of theta. Now here the minuses have flipped around, which is okay. The negative here is instead in front of this guy here. But since this is, a, since this is an equation, it's going to work the same way. As long as a negative is on one side, but not on the other, we're going to get the same thing. So my negative here is going to be tan of 180 minus that same theta. So minus 81 degrees. Now this gives me negative tan of 99 degrees. And just for fun, let's just have a look at how this will look on our unit circle. Just confirm that this is indeed correct. So I have one, one, negative one here. I have my y-axis and my x-axis here. Okay, we're looking at tan of 81. So if we draw a triangle from the origin, we make an angle of 81 degrees. So this angle here is 81 degrees. I'm looking for, first of all, a supplementary angle here. So if I do tan of 99, that's going to go to about, let's draw it, uh, let's do it in a different color again. If I draw an angle, that's going to go to about here. It's about an angle of 99 degrees. And I have that same right angle triangle in my second quadrant, whose angle size is going to be, once again, 81 degrees. But my 10 relates my opposite to my adjacent. So I have a positive value of y because I'm above the x-axis, so I have a positive value of y, but I have a negative value of x because I'm to the left here of my origin. So I have a negative x. So therefore, this is why I get a positive here and I get a negative over here. Because tan is going to be, when we look at a obtuse angle, my tan is going to be in the second quadrant, which means it's going to be negative. Why it's negative is because, remember we said that here, if we look at any random point, it has the x coordinate of cos theta, the y coordinate of sine theta. So my tan theta is going to be my sine theta over my cos theta. Or in other words, it's going to be y over x. Because remember, my cos theta is x, my sine theta is y, and I'm in the second quadrant. So my x value for my ratio is gonna be negative. That's why we get this negative thing happening 
when we start going into the second quadrant, once we get out of this portion here that we're used to dealing with. But that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for joining me and we will move on to exact values, the second part of this in the next video. I'll see you there.